so he gave strict orders not to let anyone know about this. How do you think that worked? All the people that knew she died, and now she's walking around playing. Hmm. Now, 12-year-old back then isn't like a 12-year-old today. A 12-year-old back then is pretty close ready to be married. She's, she's moved into womanhood. It's not like a little 12-year-old now that's a sixth grader that's playing on the playground. They've got to realize something divine happened. A miracle took place. More than a healing, I call it a resurrection. Not that I'm disputing when Jesus says she's not dead, she's asleep. He said that Lazarus was asleep too. And, uh, and then they couldn't quite follow what he was doing. And he said, nope, he's dead. So, so let, let me make that clear. So then he tells, give her something to eat. The post-resurrection directions. Don't tell anybody and give her something to eat. Being an English Bible major, uh, little details kind of catch my attention. Do you realize it's the woman with the issue of blood had it for how many years? Twelve. How old's the little girl? Twelve. Okay. Hmm. There's something about twelve in this chapter. There's something about the, the, the comparison and the contrast between healing that comes from touching Jesus and healing that comes from Jesus touching the person. So if you need healing, let your faith be breathed upon by the Holy Spirit and do whatever you need to do to get to the place that you can touch the hem of his garment. Or present yourself to Jesus and ask him to touch you. I love how it's instantly. Mark seems to always be kind of, he's, he's racing to the cross in his gospel, but it's immediately, instantly, it, you know, there's a lot of stuff that's happening like this in the gospel of Mark. It's just boom, 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 boom. Healings come deliverances come, resurrection comes. All of these things happen just like that. He speaks post-healing blessing to the woman with the issue of blood. Daughter, your faith has healed you. It doesn't say, my faith has healed you, or I've healed you. Your faith has healed you because you put your faith in me. Hmm. Go in peace. Okay, that's a good, good direction. Be free from your suffering. Isn't that interesting? Instantly healed, but now there's a, a direct command to be free from her suffering. You know, I, I've known people who've had a measure of healing, but then it comes back. Or they had a complete sense of, of liberty and freedom, and whatever the ailment, and, and then it returned. And it's like, okay, Holy Spirit, what's going on here? Is there something that we need to realize that once healing has taken place and it's an instantaneous healing, we need to hear, be free from your suffering. I don't know how the enemy does it, but oftentimes we start longing, longing to go back to Egypt. We long to go back to the way things were. And sometimes that's because once we're healed, we've got to work. We, we've, got to, we've got responsibilities that our, our infirmity kept us from having to have those responsibilities before. Then I look at the roller coaster of, of Jairus' faith. From watching the woman healed, spike high, and then getting the message that the daughter is dead, don't bother Jesus anymore. And then Jesus 
speaking directly to him. Believe. Believe. Don't be afraid. Believe. Oh. And then going, putting everybody out and bringing an incredible healing. There's also a theme in chapter 5 of desperation. You'll see it all through the chapter. You know, the disciples are desperate because they think they're going to drown because of the, the furious squall that just came up. Jesus, is he worried? No, he's asleep. He's asleep in the boat. The woman, not supposed to be out in public, ritually, ceremonially unclean, not allowed to be in the community of, 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 of the faith, She's desperate. She's already spent everything she had, and she's getting worse. And in her desperation, she breaks the law. And she touches Jesus' garments. And here's a father who's desperate because his daughter's about to die. And so we see desperation, desperation, desperation. You know, as I was praying about this morning, I was just saying, Lord, there's many kind of situations that we're desperate about. We're desperate because we've come to the end of our ability to figure out how to make it work, how to either be healed, how to be free, how to get rid of an addiction, how to, how to make a relationship right, uh, how to function in an in a employment environment that is, that is hostile. You know, and, and so we get desperate. And the Lord says, I can work with desperate. Desperate doesn't in any way uh, limit him. Sometimes desperation, our desperation, causes us to have a laser-like focus on Jesus, which when we do that, we start to see, and we oftentimes discover how to posture ourselves in his presence to see the miracle, the deliverance, the healing, the freedom that we need. So this morning, let's posture ourselves before the one who has authority. All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to Jesus. Let's posture ourselves before Jesus in such a way that he can do what he wants to do. I believe he wants to do it more than we want to have it done. It's like, Lord, we want to present ourselves to you today. So, Father, I just ask right now, you know where everyone in this room and over the Internet, where they are, what's the desperate point in their life? Is it their love for another one who's going through difficulty that needs a healing, that needs a restoration, that needs a marriage restored? Father, you know. You know the ones here in the room. You know everything about where their hearts are, what's happening in their spirit, and their bodies. I pray, Father, that we would get divine direction as we focus on you, Jesus. And we say, show us how to position ourselves so that we can receive that which you want to give. Hmm. I go back to the word that was spoken for the beginning and for all of 2022, that you are about to do something incredible You are waiting to do something incredible. Mm. And we want to receive it. Something incredible is about to be received. And so we position ourselves before you. And we say, Lord, let everything that's in your heart for us come forth. 
We receive it with thanksgiving. Release the faith, the grace to believe amid all the reports, amid all the, um, the things that others are saying. We say you are the sovereign, the loving, the good, the holy. We put ourselves before you and say do for us what you've longed to do. We receive it with thanksgiving. In Jesus' name.